the our royal fathers that are here, members of the diplomatic call, stay With the evolving regulatory framework of the Nigerian electricity supply industry and the declaration of eligible customers by the Office of the Honorable Minister and the regulation by the Regulatory Commission NEC, we identified the opportunities to revolutionize the industry through end-to-end -end solutions that increase electricity access for Nigerian homes and businesses and reduce the financial burden on, on FGN's balance sheet. This event is a public manifestation of the months of diligent work by NDPAC team and our project partners, devising creative and viable solutions to address power supply challenges in the Nigerian electricity supply industry. NDPSC remains at the forefront of the industry in pursuing bilateral power sales and other projects that ensure efficient and targeted power delivery to end users. We are delighted to witness the incremental results of our collaborative efforts with our partners during today's events. We are grateful for the political support of the federal government represented by our board chairman, His Excellency, the Vice President, and the state governments as you can see here, represented by His uh, Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ogun State, and of course, uh, the, His Excellency, the, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, represented by the Deputy Governor. As a matter of fact, the committee of the board uh, uh, that gave birth to this initiative was chaired by His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, uh, to pursue these targeted uh, solutions. Yeah. We are fully aware that beyond the celebrations of today's event, there remains a substantial amount of work to be done to successfully implement this program and deliver steady, reliable, and affordable electricity to Nigerian industrial clusters. I am here to affirm NDPAC's unwavering commitment to the successful execution of this project, not only in Agbara, but also in various locations across the country. We recognize, we recognize the significant multiplier effect this project will have on Nigeria's industrial, economic, and infrastructural development and the value it will bring to Nigerian people, our ultimate benefactors. We extend our gratitude to our board chairman, His Excellency the Vice President, for continually challenging NDPSC's management to enhance our company's operations and fulfill our mandate of improving electricity supply to Nigerians. We also express our appreciation to the governors present here today whose support has been instrumental in development of NDPSC's projects in their respective states. Lastly, we thank our partners, professional advisors, and the business community here present, both in Nagbara and other industrial clusters where similar projects will be developed, for their presence and contributions. Special thanks to Strong Park for graciously providing us this venue for this event. We eagerly look forward to advancing the next phases of the project development and assure you that we will persistently strive until our objectives are achieved within the shortest possible time frame. Thank you, and may God bless you all. What's actually failed me? You know, this dream, we've dreamt it for quite some time. And um, yesterday when we were going around, when the Villa team arrived, I was trying to express the appreciation of the staff and management of Niger Delta Power Holding Company. I was trying to explain to them exactly what it meant to us to have His Excellency here today. And, um, you know, the fact, I, I still struggle to wrap my mind around the fact that we mentioned this once and you said I'm coming. And one of your team members said, it's the spirit of service. And that hit home for me, that you are driven by the spirit of service. So I want to thank you, because you're vice president of the biggest and the most popular nation in Africa, and your office is so exalted, your schedule is so busy. But you didn't count it a small thing to be here today, to lead this charge. We asked for your support to get things done, and you said to us, when you need my support, ask me. 
If you need approvals, call me. If you need a board meeting, I'll schedule it. But I need you to get back on track. Excellency, you kept your word. You're a promise keeper. And you have come here in the spirit of service. And I want to thank you, not just for me, uh, for every member of the executive management and every staff member of NDPHC, from the young people on our teams to the HODs, to the young men who stand at our gates. For us at NDPHC, the significance of this visit today, this action that you have taken, is a renewal of hope. Our belief that our company can, can be turned around and we can get back on track. And the opportunity and the platform you've given us to unleash our potential. Your Excellency, we are, without gain saying, I mean, I think the only people who can honestly compete with us in this country, in terms of uh, public, public service companies, uh, maybe the NNPC, but we're right now, at this moment, the most significant contributors and drivers of the national economy. We are NDPHC. We are the only company on the West African sub-region that is owner of eight power plants. We have a 24 turbine fleet. We can do great things. And you just showed us today that we will do, we will reach our potential. Thank you. Thank you for believing. Thank you for coming all this way. You, you really, I wish you could go into the building and understand how significant today is for us. We will not fail you. I guarantee you, rising from this room, nobody sleeps until we get this done. If we can't get it done in three months, Two days before the end of three months, we'll come and prove to you why. But we're going to be walking flat out. That's our commitment to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you to our host governor and the governor of Lagos State. He's always been a strong voice for progress on our board. We're so very grateful. Honorable Minister of Power, thank you for engaging. You came into office and you started to engage with us immediately. We're really so very grateful. And to the CEOs of corporations, someone mentioned that, you know, this is like a trillion dollar man sitting in this room. Um, I'm trembling, never seen a trillion dollars. Thank you so much. The reason that I especially want to thank you is because in a season when so many were up in stakes, packing their bags and leaving, so many of you, I see so many expatriates in this room. All of you still believed in the potential of Nigeria, in the possibility that we'll come back to, that, to our season of greatness. Thank you for believing in Nigeria. Thank you for staying back. And we're not going to fail you. You have the imprimatur of the federal government seated right here, telling you that this thing will get done. This is possible. Thank you for hanging in. Thank you for signing up. And we'll do our best to not fail you. I turn to our partners. Echo Disco. Before I, I thank Echo, I'd like to thank EUL and all of the young dreamers at EUL who saw the vision, you know, who understood the possibility of these bilateral transactions and eligible customer transactions. And they walked us through it, and together with them, we signed the single most significant bilateral transaction in the electricity industry today with Echo Disco. Thank you. Thank you, Bio, for your weathering commitment. Thank you to EUL and the financial institutions, Polaris, Zeni. I'm wrapping up. I'm excited. Forgive me for taking too much time. Yes. Thank you all so very much. And I, I, won't, um, I can't stop without mentioning my young team back in the office. The commercial department has the youngest team in the building. I call them my beautiful dreamers. Their energy, their drive, they make this thing here today possible. So they're back in the office, but we're saying thank you. Thank you so much. I'm proudly um, the landlord of this place. I have to remind the vice president that uh, this morning, I said, Mr. Vice President, they are trying to do different things in my state as if it's a federal government uh, cluster. Let me just remind you, I'm the owner of this uh, estate. Proudly, uh, Ogun State is the industrial capital of Nigeria. 
Uh, and this cluster, the Agbara cluster, is one of the largest and most successful in Africa. And that is probably why this initiative is starting in this cluster. Our comparative advantages as a state is one, our proximity to Lagos, the financial capital of Nigeria, and the fifth largest economy in Africa, and two, the fact that we enjoy a crisp cross of gas reticulation, probably more than any other state in Nigeria. Our proximity to Lagos, also by implication, uh, gives us proximity to the busiest seaport, seaports and the busiest airport. So it means that being close to the biggest seaport, airport, a financial capital, one of the biggest markets in Africa, um, presents the opportunity where manufacturers want to cite their business concerns here so that they can bring in the raw materials uh, uh, easily and they can process and then you know they are close to market and of course uh, also they are open to the West African corridor through Benin Republic border that we have and of course uh, the interland. This informed our vision as a state when we assumed office and that vision was to provide a focused and qualitative governance whilst creating an enabling environment for public private sector partnership which we believe is very fundamental to the economic growth of our states and the individual prosperity of our people so we propose to be focused and qualitative create an enabling environment for public private sector partnership believing that it will lead to the economic growth of our state and economic growth leads to individual prosperity. So creating an enabling environment, definitely um, beyond providing the needed infrastructure, which uh, the MC has alluded to that we have done successfully well, be it uh, rail infrastructure, road infrastructure, air infrastructure, and so on and so forth. One thing that is very fundamental to the sustenance of socio-economic activity or of viability is provision of electricity, without which um, all the infrastructure that you may provide would only be in vain. So we believe that you know such initiatives like this uh, speak to ensuring the sustainability of competitive industrialization, and one must not but salute you know um, this initiative. We as a state. Um, have gone ahead besides this Agbara cluster, we have five other clusters. We have one by the interchange called the Remo cluster. We are creating a new one called the Magburo cluster. We are creating the, uh, our own Aerotropolis, which is our special acquisition zone, which will be the first of its kind in Nigeria. We also have the Jebode clusters, because we believe that it is through these clusters that we can jumpstart socioeconomic activity. These clusters, what do they seek to do? Provide the parcels of land, provide the needed infrastructure, and then this attracts you know, industrial activity. But without a doubt, without stable, reliable, and clean power, all these initiatives will be in vain. So to that extent, uh, we are extremely excited. Um, the truth is, I was discussing with um, the Minister of Power, between Ogun and Lagos State, and perhaps maybe your state, we account for 65% of the optical power in Nigeria. If our power issues are resolved through these kind of initiatives, it means you have more than enough power for the rest uh, of the country. Agbara has about 200 companies there about, and it's projected that their power requirement will be probably about in the circle of about 200 megawatts. So the 45 megawatts capacity that you have at your power station is a drop in the ocean. So we need to look at how to immediately ramp it up so that that you know, much power, this company right now does not depend on grid power. And there's so many like companies like that. And the projection is that the requirement will grow by about 10 to 15 percent annually. So we must continue to ensure that um, we as state governments partner with the private sector in line with our vision to ensure the success and sustenance of initiatives like this. 
We want to thank the federal government uh, for the new um, amendment to the constitution that now allows us as state governments and subnationals to generate electricity, to distribute, to actually transmit, you know, within our states. And that will allow us to further partner with, you know, such uh, um, initiatives and partners like this to ensure uh, uh, the success of this initiative. Uh, we welcome this initiative. We want to thank the federal government. We want to thank His Excellency the Vice President for leading from the front. He speaks to your determination, your commitment uh, to ensure the sustenance of social economic activity and development uh, 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 in the country. You are the uh, chairman of National Economic Council anyway, so this is bang on your shoulders. But I must thank you because you are in a reality late last night. A couple of days ago, you were in Kogi. Among several other exigencies of office, you have managed. I know you have a cold, but your determination to see this through has brought you here. And I know on Sunday, you are again going to China for two days. Mr. Vice President, we are very grateful. I want to thank Mr. President himself, uh, President Bola Ahmed Sunibu, for prioritizing this sector. This is the only way we can unlock the potentials that are, are, are inherent in our country. I, I recall that uh, I went, I had the privilege of bringing Mr. President to Benin Republic um, a few weeks ago. And I was surprised to find out that there was a particular uh, a cluster, industrial cluster in Benin, whose power consumption exceeded the entire power consumption of the entire country. To speak to you how uh, such initiatives like this can uh, unlock the potentials of, of the country. I want to thank um, the management of uh, Niger Delta uh, Power Holding Company. In this chamber is rightly captured by the NC. We have up to a trillion dollars worth of things. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have the prepared speech from which the media can capture the high points. But the summary of the power equation in this country is a matter of economics, not engineering. If the economics makes sense, the jigsaw puzzle, everything else will fall into place. During the Pareto principle, 80% of consequences are generated by 20% of the causes. Eco Disco, for instance, they generate up to 80% of their revenue from only 20% of their customers. So I believe that the Agbara Cluster, to mention just one of the few clusters in this country, they can still get a decent tariff for the common man while still saving their premium customers significant production costs. It's quite embarrassing that the whole of Agbara is virtually off the grid. This company requires about five megawatts of electricity to run the show. They are using a blend of solar, gas, so many energy sources to keep the plant alive. I need the premier is the premier manufacturing plant for the area of core competence in Africa. And how much do they pay Shell? They pay Shell as much as seven dollars per unit of the power they generate from this. It costs them about three hundred to three hundred and fifty naira per kilowatt. And our grid power is between 62 to 70 naira. Am I right, sir? So even if we give them 24-7 power at 100 or 150, 
they will still be saving more than 500 percent. I want to align myself with the Deputy Governor of Lagos State. Was it Malcolm X or Crispus Attux who said the enemy of the black man is often not the white man, but men of his own color. Here we are, a nation whereby people feel the grass is greener at the other side. In real sense, this nation holds tremendous opportunities for anyone who is willing to work hard. I'm here to reassure the business community that we mean business. I was going through this paper. I was able to count 36 companies, major conglomerates in Akbara, Ota, Ipo, Shagamu. I was able to count 24. And Idi Roko, EUL Lera, I counted 14. They have so far signed up about 50 megawatts. Am I right? I want to give you my word, and my word is my bond. If you need 200 megawatts, 300 megawatts, we can give it to you. <laughs> and six months, MD is too long a time. We need the money. We need the dollars. So I'm charging you, please, tidy this thing up within three months. Maximum four months, I think we should, we should put that arrangement in place. And I'm willing to come back to Lagos, visit all the clusters, and win the confidence. It's all about advocacy. It's about people believing in you. And I have the confidence of my boss so that I can talk authoritatively. He's someone who is very passionate about the Nigeria project. He's very, very committed to repositioning this nation. We all need to rally around him and support him to see to the realization of his dream for a greater Nigeria. As I have always said in several fora, the hope for the black man rests with the people of this country. If Nigeria fails, the black man has failed. So this is why I want to thank you for coming to listen to us. I'm not an expert on energy, but I will ask you to fire as much questions as we have the experts to respond to your question. But the rest are short. We are going to supply your power needs. And with no strings attached to. Pay us. We are giving power to Togo. I think you are giving 100 megawatts to Togo. And some of these nations are not even paying us. So why can't we give to businesses that will pay us? It's just simple arithmetic. It's a matter of economics. So I want to thank you once again. And, and any gray areas, the experts are here to respond to your queries. Thank you so much. I don't want to talk... <laughs>
on some on some products. What is it for that topic? Go out to the customer for to pretend that uh, animal care services consult.